The Scala Electric America's Technical Training Department presents the e-learning module F7, P7, and G7 Troubleshooting for the Machine Operator. Hello, my name is Paul Avery and I'm an engineer in the Technical Training Department at Yaskow Electric America. I will be your instructor today as we go through this e-learning module. The purpose of this e-learning module will be to teach machine operators some effective techniques to help uncover drive problems. No prerequisite electrical knowledge will be necessary for using the techniques discussed. We will use the drive keypad that comes with the F7, P7, and G7 drives in the troubleshooting process. The keypad can show us useful bits of information called monitors. Monitors show the status of the drive, such as the speed command, amount of current being sent to the motor, and whether all the drive inputs and outputs are open or closed. We will look closer at the monitors later in the presentation. Also critical to the task of keypad troubleshooting is the status of the LEDs on the keypad, which will give us clues to the drive's current state. There are five LEDs along the top of the keypad and two LEDs that are part of the run and stop buttons. Knowing what each LED represents will be helpful in knowing how the drive is functioning. We will also discuss how drive fault codes are displayed. Cover any faults that may be remedied without significant electrical knowledge. One of the most powerful troubleshooting tools at our disposal is the fault trace function. The fault trace function is a snapshot of the drive status at the instant of the latest fault. We can use information shown to us by the fault trace as clues as to what caused the drive to shut down. As a convenience to maintenance personnel, the fault trace can never be erased. The information it contains can only be overwritten the next time a drive fault occurs. Use the keypad shown at the left to work your way through the fault trace function. The underline under the 01 of the top monitor represents the blinking that you would normally see on the keypad. Use the shift reset key to shift the underline to the U1 and then the up arrow key to change the U1 to a U2 and thus enter the fault trace function. Next click the shift reset key again so that the underline moves back to the 01 and then we can increment through all 14 items of the fault trace function. Use the up and down arrow keys to view all the fault trace monitors and then continue to the next slide. Whether the motor won't start or stops unexpectedly, one of the first steps is to see if the AC drive can tell us something about the current situation via the keypad. For all Generation 7 Yaskawa drives, except for the J7 and V7 drives, the drive can only accept a run command if the drive displays a ready indication in the upper right of the keypad screen. The ready indication is abbreviated RDY. If the drive is faulted, the ready indication will not be shown since no run commands will be executed until the fault situation is cleared manually. Another common cause for the ready indication not to be shown is that someone has pressed the menu key and the drive is no longer in the operation menu where it needs to be to accept a run command. The drive will not stop just because the ready indication disappeared when we exited the operation menu, but it will refuse to restart without the ready indication. So if the drive is running fine but there is no ready indication, there are no problems but we do need to get back to the operation menu before the next run command. We will practice returning to the operation menu on the next slide. The keypad shown on this slide will help us practice finding the operation menu. Clicking on the menu key of the keypad, we can cycle through the available menus of the Generation 7 drives. Once we have found the operation menu, click the Dad Enter key to return to the monitor display and get our ready indication back. After successfully finding the ready indication, please proceed to the next slide. The drive can be configured or misconfigured to ignore run commands coming from particular sources. Most of the time, the drive needs to receive a run command from an external source, like a switch or an output from another piece of equipment. To accept these kinds of signals, the drive must be configured for a remote operation. The keypad indicates if the drive is set to accept an external source by lighting the remote sequence and reference LEDs. If the sequence LED is off, then the drive will only accept run commands from the keypad's run button. Likewise, if the reference LED is off, the drive will only accept speed commands from the keypad itself. 
Sometimes the situation can be remedied by pressing the local remote key to toggle the drive back to remote operation. Changing between local and remote control can only be done while the drive is stopped. Sometimes a drive can seem to not be running, but in truth really is running. It is just that it is running at zero speed. A quick indication that a drive is running at zero speed is the appearance of a flashing LED on the stop key, as shown on the keypad here. A full examination of the situation shows the stop key LED is flashing, while the run key LED is lit steadily. Also, the U101 monitor shows 0.0 Hz frequency reference. Technically, the frequency reference can be as high as 1.5 Hz, and the stop key LED will still flash because we are concerned with the frequency command below the drive's minimum frequency reference. The minimum frequency reference ranges from 0 to 1.5 Hz and depends on the control method of the drive. If the alarm LED is lit up, then a drive fault is preventing the drive from running. If the alarm LED is just flashing, then the drive is experiencing a fault type condition, but drive operation is not impaired. Most of the time, the steady alarm LED is accompanied by a message on the keypad detailing the drive fault that stopped the drive. The keypad on this slide shows an external fault as the culprit stopping operation. When a fault is displayed on the keypad, most of the time we'll need to contact an electrician or engineer to discover the origin of the fault. About the only fault we may be able to fix without electrical knowledge may be the external fault shown here. If the machine that the drive is associated with has some kind of safety interlock, the external fault may show that the proper safety gates or latches are not properly engaged. Try resetting any safety gates and then hitting the shift reset key to see if the fault is cleared. If the external fault does not clear, contact an electrician. As a clarification, I would like to mention that sometimes when the alarm LED is lit, the keypad might not display the fault that caused the LED to light if someone has pressed the menu key. Sometimes what prevents the drive running is the fact that the run command is not being seen by the drive. To check whether the drive is receiving the run command, we will need to use one of the drive's built-in monitors. To check monitors, we need to be in the operation menu. We practiced reaching the operation menu a few slides ago. We also know that we are in the right spot because the top monitor will be the U101 frequency reference monitor. Once we know we are in the operation menu, we can use the up and down arrow keys to scroll through the monitors to find the valuable information. Use the arrow keys on the keypad shown here to scroll through the first 18 monitors. Definitions of the monitors can be found in the user and programming manuals for each drive. Now let's focus on the monitor that will tell us if the drive is seeing the external run command. The monitor in question is U1-10, the input terminal status monitor. The far right digit of the U110 monitor represents the state of the S1 digital input. The digit to the left of the S1 digit represents the status of the S2 digital input, and so forth. If the run command input from the control terminals has been initiated properly, the rightmost digit of the U110 monitor should turn from a 0 to a 1. If we try to start the drive or the machine control attempts to start the drive and the rightmost digit does not change to a 1, then there is something wrong. At this point, it may be necessary to have an electrician check the control wiring to the drive. Sometimes it is a good idea to see if the drive considers itself as running. To do this, we will need to use the U1-12 monitor. The far right bit of the drive operation status monitor, U112, is the during run bit. If the bit is a zero, then the drive doesn't recognize the run state, and the problem most likely resides with the physical run signal. If the bit is a one, then the drive does recognize the run condition, and the fact that the motor is not moving may be attributable to the lack of a speed command or one of the other situations we have discussed. The speed command is called the frequency reference, and it tells the drive how fast to go. Monitor U101 will show the frequency reference no matter what the source of the speed information is. If the source of the frequency reference is a voltage from a controller or a speed pot, then we can use monitor U115. U115 is the measured level of voltage at the A1 analog input and is shown as a percentage of maximum voltage. In most general cases, that maximum voltage is equal to 60 Hz frequency reference, so we can think of 100% being equal to 60 Hz. We can use U115 to see if the value of U115 matches the value of U101, for instance, if U115 shows 50%, then U101 should equal 30 Hz. 
If there is a discrepancy between the two, it shows that drive programming is not set up properly to use the analog input as the frequency reference, or that the drive is in local control, as we discussed earlier. Let's wrap this up and review what we have covered. We found that we can use the keypad of the F7, P7, or G7 drive to help us troubleshoot our drive operation, or lack thereof, even if we lack electrical knowledge. We found out that the drives have a function called a fault trace function that will tell us what was happening at the moment of the most recent fault, which will be handy if it was a fault that shut down operation of our drive. We discovered that for a run to start the drive, the ready indication must be seen in the upper right hand corner of the keypad display. We also checked out the LEDs of the keypad and how they can show us more information about faults, local remote control, and lacking a speed command. Finally, we took a closer look at a few valuable monitors that the keypad can display and reviewed how they might help us diagnose drive problems. The purpose of this module was to arm the typical machine operator with a few tips that may save some downtime if they are used properly. However, the final review of any real operational problems should still be in the hands of the electrician or maintenance person. Please rely on their capabilities. This brings us to the end of this e-learning module. I want to thank you for taking the time to look into some of Yaskawa's AC drive solutions with me. Please feel free to contact us in the Technical Training Services group of Yaskawa through any of the methods shown on this slide. We love to hear comments, suggestions, and questions.